Welcome to lecture four, work. Okay, so here's something old and something new. First, Newton's second law of motion, I assume this is old for most of you, says that force is mass times acceleration, which is m times x double prime if x is the displacement as a function of time. So when force is constant, then work is defined as force times distance. This is what I want you to remember. When I say force is constant, um, suppose we're dropping a ball from a roof or something like that. Then we can assume that gravitational force is a constant 9.81 meters per second squared. Now, gravitational force is not going to be constant if we're in a rocket ship and approaching the Earth from light years away, or maybe not quite that far, but you get the idea. It's also not going to be constant if we're measuring like a magnetic force, because there, the closer you get to the magnet, the greater the force is going to be. So uh, what we will do um, shortly is we'll see when the force is not constant, how to express this as, a, uh, as an integral. But first, let's review um, some units. So let's start with the metric system. So the metric system mass is, is usually measured in kilograms. Um, distance is measured in meters. So force is measured in newtons. Let's write this out. So a newton is one kilogram meter per second squared. And so work is measured in in newton meters. So we say newton meters, usually hyphenated. And a newton meter is also called um, a joule. So that's something you've probably heard. I feel like that word comes up now and then, but you probably didn't know it was a newton meter. Okay, so let's, let's go to the, the English. So it's actually customary in the English system that the not to measure things by their mass, but to measure things by their force. So pound is actually a, so force, force is usually measured in pounds. Uh, let's say pounds, I'll write it out. Or, or uh, L, LB. Um, I know that's strange the first time you hear that because you know, we probably grew up thinking that kilograms and pounds are the same, you know, Pretty much the same thing, just off by 2.2. .2. You know, if, if you weigh 100 pounds on Earth and you weigh a lot less than that on the Moon, however, if you weigh 100 kilograms on Earth, or I guess technically weighing some number of kilograms is technically an incorrect statement. So if you are 100 kilograms on Earth and you're still 100 kilograms on, on the Moon, you're just exerting um, fewer newtons. And if this sounds strange, it's because people abuse this thing all the time. We say so-and-so weighs this many kilograms. Okay, so you're actually maybe wondering what, what the uh, mass is in English. Oops, sorry about that. Some of you already know. It's actually, it's actually called a slug. Believe me, if you don't believe me, look it up. Um, it's never really used, but a slug is actually the, the unit of, of mass in the English system. And it's so uncommon that I have no idea how many slugs are in a pound at sea level on the earth. 16 sort of rings the bell, but I could be totally making that up. Okay, so distance is, is usually in feet. And so work is usually called a foot pound. Usually called foot pound. And um, one foot pound, you don't need to know this for this class, but just to tell you, one foot pound is approximately, yeah, maybe I should say approximately, it's not exactly equal to, but it's approximately equal to 1.36 joules. So, so in other words, again, to compare metric and English, so pound already has the gravitational force built in, whereas kilograms does not. Okay, so let's do an example. Uh, one of these will be metric, one of these will be English. 
So the first one, how much work does it take to lift a 1.2 kilogram book from the floor to a desk that is 0.7 meters high? So here we have a 1.2 kilogram book, and we want to lift this 0 0.7 meters. So it's force times distance, but we have to be slightly careful. because So work is force times distance. And now force is mass times acceleration times distance, mad. So that is 1.2 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared times 0 0.7 meters. And this is approximately 8.2 joules. Okay, so example two. How much work does it take to lift a 20 pound weight six feet off the ground? So here we have something that is 20 pounds and we want to lift it six feet. So work is force times distance. Now 20 pounds is a force times six feet, which is 180 foot pounds. 180, no, 120, I'm sorry. <laughs> 120. There we go. Okay, so two different answers. Um, and just notice the difference between the fact that this is a mass and this is a force. Okay, so let's consider the case when force is a variable. So I'll give you the punchline first. Um, work is force times distance, but now we, we need to integrate force from A to B. So instead of drawing this as a number line, I think it's, for me, it's more intuitive to draw it vertically because I'm thinking of this as like a rocket, maybe a rocket ship launching. And suppose the rocket ship wants to go from height A to height B. And maybe gravitational force it, um, is non, it's not constant over this large in interval. Or maybe this is like a magnetic force or something like that. However you want to think about it. Um, so what we want to do is, is we want to, I'm going to draw it as a rocket because I can draw that better than Really anything, uh, maybe I can't draw better. Never mind. forgot I said that. Okay, so here's, here's a rocket. All right, it's a squid, well, whatever the heck it is. It's shooting up in the atmosphere. And um, so what we wanna do is let's, let's break this thing into small intervals, small enough that we can assume that the force is constant or approximately constant over each interval. So this is like a Riemann sum type game where we break these things up into small pieces. So in each interval, let me pick a point, doesn't matter which one, let me just call it this one x1 star. Let me call this point x2 star. And then let me call this last point xn star. Okay, so for this rocket ship or giant squid, whatever it is, to go up to here, it has to traverse each interval separately. So let's let's zoom in on one of these intervals. Let's zoom in on, on this one. So this, this interval is, so this, here, here's going to be uh, x i star, and this distance the interval, let's say it's delta x, let's suppose that we're breaking this up into equal size intervals, then the work that it takes our hero, the, I'm just going to say the squid, rock, that looks like a, I, I don't know what that looks like. Um, the work that it takes this guy to go from here to here, so the work of the ith interval, let's say, is the force which we're assuming is constant, f of xi star, times the distance, which is delta x. So that's how much work it takes to go from here to here. So for each one of these intervals, it takes this much up, this much. So the, the work is approximately the sum of i equals one up to n of the force xi star times delta x. And then if we integrate this and we take the limit, that's what we're doing up here, then we get an integral, and that is the exact work.
Okay, so here's our second example, and this one is going to be in the English system. So when a particle on the real line, let me draw the real line, this is like uh, x, is located x feet from zero, then a force of x squared plus 2x pounds acts on it. So here's zero, and so what this is saying is that if this particle is, this ball or whatever, is at zero, there's no force acting on it. And if it's way up here, there's going to be a lot of force. So I'm trying to think of a, I'm trying to think of a good example of real world example where this could possibly come up because it's like the opposite of a magnet. The further we get from this, the more the force. So I can't think of one, um, but we can still do the math easy. This is a nice toy example. So how much work does it take to move the particle from x equals one to x equals three? So we have this particle which is starting out here, and we want to move it up to here. So I like to think of, for me, I like to think of this vertically in terms of height, but this will work too. So what we want to do is, you know, you want to break up this interval into little pieces and work is, a, is the force that it takes along each interval times the width. When you take the limit, you get an integral. In fact, you can just memorize that formula. So A times B times force of x uh, dx. So let's do this. So this is the integral from 1 to 3 of x squared plus 2x dx. So this is x cubed over 3 plus x squared from 1 to 3. Okay, so 27 over 3 is 9 plus... Um, Um, 3 squared is 9 plus 9 minus plugging in 1 we get 1 third and plugging in 1 into here we get 1 so what is this this is 18 minus 1 is 17 so 18 minus 1 is 17 minus 1 third is 16 and 2 thirds 16 and two thirds, which is, f so what is that? That's 48 plus two is 50 thirds. 50 thirds. How much work is done? And so th this is gonna be foot pounds. Okay, so let's do a more real life example. I guess more real life than the last one. Um, so recall springs from physics, uh, Hooke's law, um, fancy name, but all it says is that the restoring force of a spring stretched by a distance x is proportional to the distance itself. So let me actually write that down in English. So the restoring force is proportional to the displacement. Okay, so here's an example of this. Let me take a, a spring and suppose we stretch it by a certain amount. Let's say, call this x. Then the force as a function of distance is pro proportional just means some constant times x. So the way to think of this is if you double the amount that you stretch it, you double the force. If you triple the amount you stretch it, you triple the force. Now some books will say it's positive xk or kx, and other books will say negative. I like saying negative because the force is in the opposite direction of motion. So if you pull the spring this way, it gets, there's a force going in the opposite direction, and if you compress the mass, then there's a force pushing it to the right. Um, although as, as long as you're consistent, it doesn't matter. And I think our textbook uses, not sure, but I think it uses this convention, so I'll stick with that. Um, either way, we're, k is always a positive constant. Okay, so the restoring force of a 10 centimeter spring stretched up to a length of 15 centimeters is 40 newtons. Here's an example. So we have a spring that is at rest here at 10 centimeters, 
It doesn't matter what that is, as long as we call that zero, the, the equilibrium. Suppose we, we stretch it of a length uh, up to, this would be 0 0.05 meters. So then how much work is done by stretching it? So this is, so um, from 15 centimeters, which is where it is here, to 18 centimeters. So let's, let me draw that. 15 to, so that's 0 0.03 meters. So how much work does it take to go from here even further to there? So the first thing to do is to figure out what the spring constant is. We don't even know what k is. So force as a function of position is, is k times 0 0.05, it, which is 40 newtons. So when you stretch it 0 0.05 meters times k, you get 40 newtons. So that means that k is 40 over 0 0.05, which is 40 times 20, or 800. So in other words, force is 800x. So that's what we want to integrate. So the work is the integral of 800x dx. And now we've got to figure out where to integrate from. So the wrong answer is 15 to 18. And not just because we're speaking centimeters instead of meters. But where, where is equilibrium here? So we say this is 10 centimeters, but this we need to call x equals 0, because this is where there is no force acting on the spring. This is equilibrium. Even though this is 10 centimeters, this is equilibrium. So really, we're, we're integrating from here to there. So this is 0.05 to 0.08. So um, 0.05 to 0.08. So... The integral of this thing is 400x squared, agreed? 400x squared from 0.05 to 0.08. So 400 times, let's make that a little better, 400 times 0.08 squared minus 0.05 squared. A little bit of Pre-processing, this is 1.56 joules. Okay, so let's finish with two examples. These type of problems are what I remember vividly from calculus when I took it way back in the day. Like the, to me, these were the classic type of calculus problems. Okay, so a 200-pound cable is 100 feet long and hangs from the top of a building. So let, let me draw this. So let's, let's draw a building, and we have this cable, which is, it's a little bit thick. doesn't matter how tall the building is as long as it's more than 100 feet. And we want to move, or we're going to pull this cable up to the top of the building. Um, so the cable has, has density. Let's see, so the, the cable is, is 200 pounds divided by 100 feet, so it's, it's 2 pounds per foot. And so let's compare this to the situation, suppose we have a cable on the other side of the building, which is a fishing wire, which weighs essentially nothing, and we have a 200 pound mass hanging from that. Now which one of these is going to um, take more work to move to the top of the building. Well, here you got to take this 200 pounds. So for the, this one, you you got to move the 200 pounds, 100 feet. So that that's going to be four zeros, 20,000 foot pounds. Now for this one, a whole bunch of the weight is really close to the top, so it doesn't take very much work to move this little chunk up here to the top, right? Because that's almost up there. So it's going to take less work to move this cable up than it does if, if it were a 200 pound weight hanging from the bottom. And especially more than if, consider a third scenario where maybe you have a 200 pound weight hanging 
near the top. That's not going to be much weight at all. Okay, so how do we do this? So let's divide our cable into little pieces. And let's assume that any one of the, and so let's compute how much work it's going to take to move this little piece up, this little piece up to the top. So that little piece of cable, it's here. Let's say this is the, the ith. So the, this is the height delta x, and this is the um, this is the ith little piece. I don't know how to say that. This is the ith piece. So the so the work that it takes this little piece, the ith piece, is force on the ith piece times distance on the ith piece. So force is just weight, right? So that's going to be 2 pounds per square foot. Or not square foot. 2 pounds per foot times, um, times however long it is, which is delta x. So this whole thing is force. It's just weight. So delta x, maybe, maybe I should say delta x is, is in feet. Um, because remember, the units always have to cancel. And then distance, how far do we have to go to the top? Well, however far this is, it's probably going to be easiest if, if you measure this, if you measure distance as being in this direction. So, so this is x equals 0, and this down here is x equals Actually, that, that doesn't matter as much as the bottom of the cable. Wait, where's the bottom of the cable? That's here. This is x equals 100. So now this distance is, is going to be, let's say, uh, let's call this x, sort of what we did before, x i star. So um, let's do... Uh, so let's let's call this x1 star x2 star x3 star all the way up to xn star So so we are dividing up this interval from 0 to 100 in little tiny pieces and Obviously, the work is going to be what we. So the work is going to be the limit, as the number of these pieces goes to infinity, of. Of, um, the work. So, we're approximating the work as, uh, of the whole rope as the work of each individual little piece, which is is. Is the limit. As n goes to infinity, of. A equals 1 up to n. I should probably say I equals 1 up to n up here. Of, of this thing. So that this is 2 delta x times x i star. So this is it's going to be the integral from 0 to 100 of 2 x dx. So this thing becomes a dx. This thing is just x. And so this is um, x squared from 0 to 100, which is 100 squared, which is 10, four zeros, which is, which is 10,000 foot-pounds. So notice that it is, it is half of what we would get if we were to put the 200 pound weight at the bottom. So another way to think of that is it's the same thing as if we had a, my drawing's really going to get messy now, if we had had a 200 pound weight at the halfway point, uh, force times distance, then 
pulling this up to the top is going to be the same as pulling this whole thing to the top. And that kind of makes sense in a way because it's in some sense the it's the average. Okay, we'll finish with um, this example with a tank of water. This is, again, this is what I think of a, as a classic calculus type problem from when I took calculus. So here we have a tank that is the shape of an inverted, inverted cone, and it's a, um, it has radius four meters. And the height is 10, although the water only goes up to height eight. So let me draw this as, this is two meters, and then down here this is eight meters. So there's water in here, and we need to figure out how much work it takes to pump out this water out of the tank. And th this could be a real-life type problem. Actually, in the foothills of South Carolina, there's a reservoir, Bad Creek, which is um, above Lake Jocassee, and they pump water up into Bad Creek every night over the summer um, so, they can, so they can use the energy during peak hours during the day when people's ACs are on full blast. Okay, so let's think how we're going to do this. This is, gonna, this is sort of like a three-dimensional version of the previous problem when we had just a rope hanging up and we had to integrate. So we had to figure out how much work it took to uh, pull the rope up to the top of the building. So similar thing here. We are going to break this thing into layers, like little, little cylinders. Let's, so let's suppose that we break these up into... Um, n, n little slices. Each one has a height of delta x. And then, um, so, so let's see. The, the mass of the ith slice. So let's, let's also say that this, the height of this, or not the height, but as before, let's call this distance zero, and this, so, so this is going to be x, x equals 10, and this is going to be x equals zero. So th this is going to be at height x i star. So now, um, the mass of, of, of this i little slice is going to be density times the volume. Actually, I haven't told you what density is. times the volume of the ith slice. Density, I should probably say the density of water is, I didn't tell you that, I should have said this in the problem statement, but I'll just say it now. The density of water is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. Um, so now what, what is the volume of the ith um, little slice? So that's so let's, let's say that the radius of this is ri. So that's going to be pi ri squared times, so we're assuming that this is a, it's almost a, a cylinder, this little slice. So, so area times height, pi r squared is the area, and height is times delta x. So let's make that have to. Let's just make that the same color. Delta x. So that's mass. And then I'll just tell you where we're going with this. The force um, of the ith layer, which is the weight, is the mass times times g, which is approximately equal to 9.8 times g. So and then what we're going to do is we're going to integrate. So once we compute that, we're going to integrate. Um, so that's what we want to multiply. This force times the distance, which is x, and we want to integrate that from 2 equals 10. Okay, so um, what do we need to know? We need to know, we need to know what, what r is. So uh, let's see. Let's do some trigonometry here. So this distance, this, so um 
this distance here is 10 minus xi star. So if we do similar triangles, we have ri. Oh, let's I'm not going to be able to draw that here. Um, let's see. Let's move it over a little bit. Ri, and this is 10 minus xi star. And then the bigger triangle is going to have radius 4 and height 10. So using similar triangles, Ri over 10 minus xi star is equal to 4 over 10. So we get that Ri equals 2 fifths times 10 minus xi star. Okay, so the mass is, let's go over here, that is going to be 1,000 times pi r squared, so that's going to be 4 25ths times 10 minus xi star times delta x. And so now the force, or the weight of that little slice is again mi times g, which is um, it's approximately, I should say. Oh, hold on. Let's let's simplify this first. Um, so, a um, thousand over twenty-five is forty, times four is one sixty. Yeah. So that's so this is one hundred and sixty pi. So let's let's write that out. So um, one sixty pi times ten minus x i star square. Oh, I forgot my squared up up there. Squared times nine point eight. That's my g times delta x. I guess I stuck my g before I finished the the m i. But th this is force and. This is examples in the book. You can, you're can you welcome to check. Um, multiplying this out, you get 1568, one of these things that I pre-computed ahead of time. Now I'm going to run out of room. Um, let's erase that and move down to the bottom. So th this is going to be 1568 pi 10 minus x i star times delta x. Okay, so that, that's force. And so now we have to each each little slice here has to we have to move it um, a distance x or x i star up to the top. So the so the work then it takes to move the the i. You can think of this as like I think of this as resistance. So like so to move this thing up to the top, the amount of resistance against us is going to be the weight times how far we have to um, move it. So w i is is I should probably say approximately because it's getting a little sloppy with that because it's approximately equal to f i times x i star, and I, and I say approximately because and this isn't a perfect cylinder like we're assuming it is. So this this is a thing that we have above, 1568. Oops, let's fix, clean that up a little bit. 1568 times pi times um, so we have an x i star times 10 minus x i star squared times delta x. And so now the work, now the total work is going to be the limit of, so, so we're adding up all of these little slices. So we're taking up 
i equals 1 to infinity of wi. And if we add this thing up, so adding these things up tells us how much work it is to, to get every single slice up. And taking the limit just gives us an integral. So this is going to be the integral from 2 x equals, doesn't matter if, if we add up the slices this way or that way. So let's, let's add them up this way. So 2 to 10 of 15 68 times pi times, then we have x, 10 minus x squared dx. So this is going to be the integral that we have to compute. So we, let's see, so we, okay, so we can pull out, pull out the constant. So this is 15, 68 pi, and then oh, let's, let me write this thing up, up top, so, so x, 10 minus x squared, so, so that's 100 minus um, 20x minus x squared plus x squared times times x, right? Okay, now I can just multiply, multiply that down here. So let, let me go from 2 to 10 of 100x minus 20x squared plus x cubed dx. So th this thing is 1568 pi times this, compute this integral, term by term. So that's going to be, first one is 50x squared. The next one is 20x cubed over 3. And the next one is x to the fourth over 4. And we're going from 2 to 10. So this is I have enough room here, 1568 pi times, times, okay, so, um, how about this? So, uh, you know what to do from here. You plug in 10, um, you plug in 10 into here and subtract off 2 from here. Uh, let's try to see if I can fit it. So, um, 50 times 100 squared, so or, or 10 squared, so that's 100, minus 20 times um, 100 cubed, so that's, or sorry, 10 cubed, so that's 1,000 over 3, plus 10, oh, that's 10 to the 4th, um, yeah, that's a four up there. So 10 with four zeros over four. And then minus, minus um, 50 times, so at this point, this is just math. 50 times two squared minus 20 over three times two cubed plus 2 to the 4th, 8 over 2. Anyways, if, if you do this, so if you take 1568 pi times this creature minus that thing, you end up getting, honestly, I'm, I'm following the answer in the book now. It's just, you can plug this into Wolfram Alpha. You get approximately uh, 3.4 times 10 to the 6th joules. And that is how much work it takes to empty, empty this tank.